Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Uzak Rota Travel Summit online this year. It is 8 a.m. in Istanbul. It is 6 a.m. in Berlin and Belgrade. It is midnight in New York. Now the New Yorkers are going to sleep and the rest of the US will do that soon as well. And it is 1 p.m. in Kuala Lumpur, in Singapore, and in uh, a few other Asian metropoles which are with us today. Welcome, very warmly welcome to the Uzak Rota Travel Summit 2020. Boy, boys and girls, what a year. What a year it was. Last time we've seen each other, most of us, it was exactly one year ago, a little bit less than one year ago, in beautiful Istanbul, in beautiful Turkey. And we were all together in a beautiful conference hall, in a great facility, all feeling that vibe of being together and opening the conference and sharing the moment with each other. And what do we have a year later? We have, and I want to be optimistic all day and all the three days, and I think we have all reasons to be optimistic, despite the very difficult situation people are in, in the travel industry and many other industries. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel and uh, there is a lot of reason for hope. So let's have that as a motto of our conference and of this travel summit. There is a light at the end of the tunnel and together we will discuss for three days how we're going to use that and if I have learned one thing from the travel industry is that the travel industry has all the motivation to overcome this. So I tribute the travel industry and I think everybody else does that You've gone through a very tough year, 2020, and may 2021 be a better one. Uzak Rota has grown to be the brand of the travel industry events in Turkey. And very quickly after starting many years ago, I think it's been like 10 years ago, it has grown to be the major brand. So Uzak Rota nowadays is not really a Turkish brand, it's an international brand. And the man behind that brand is Gökhan Erdogan, a very dear friend of all of us. I think none of the participants here can say that he's just a, a business contact. He's not, he's our friend and he's now in the picture. And I'd like Gakan just to welcome our participants. He does that with a very few words. He never has too many words and he always then runs away behind stage, backstage. So now not backstage, in front of the stage, in front of the camera, Gakan, good morning. Günaydın kardeşim. Nasılsın? Günaydın, günaydın Alex. E, Valla çok iyiyim. E, etkinliğe sonunda başlayabildik. E, bundan dolayı da çok mutluyum. E, çok keyifli bir organizasyon aslında bizi bekliyor. Bu, bu etkinlik için özellikle son bir senedir çok iyi hazırlandık. E, tabii ki Mart ayında özellikle bu pandeminin olmasından sonra e, ben fiziksel bir etkinliği zaten gerçekleştiremeyeceğimizi tahmin ediyordum. E, bundan dolayı Mart ayı itibariyle bir yazılıma başladık. Ee, şu anda bizi izlemiş olduğunuz yazılım tamamen aslında bize ait. Ee, alternatif bir yandan da zaten bunu geliştiriyorduk. Olur ya hani düzelir belki biz iki tarafta yaparız ama e, asıl olay da e, online tarafta gerçekleşecek diye düşünüyorduk. E, çok iyi hazırlandık. Normal şartlarda aslında baktığımızda e, standart bir e, arketepe embed kodu gömüp e, bir, herhangi bir şekilde bir web sitesi aslında oluşturabilirdik ama e, bu yılki etkinliği çok özel olsun istedik. Herkes uzak kutudaki var olan etkinlik deneyimini bu tarafta da yaşasın istedik. E, ve orada nasıl ki network yapabiliyor, burada da fuar alanları oluşturalım, yüz yüze görüşebilsinler. Aynı deneyimi buraya da taşıyalım istedik ve sonunda bu platform oluştu. Gerçekten bundan dolayı da çok mutluyuz. E, yetiştirebildik sonunda biliyorsun bu tarzdaki yazılımlar çok çok zordur. Özellikle. Ee, ben ama herkesin çok iyi olacağını düşünüyorum. Özellikle 3 güne çıkarttık ki e, bu taraftaki eventi daha fazla network olabilsin. E, online olmasın tabii ki şöyle de bir artısı olacak. Bütün dünyadan katılımcılar buna bağlanabiliyor. E, bu da bizim için çok büyük bir artı oluyor. E, ve bunun sonrasında da e, güzel networklerle umarım e, herkes tekrardan işlerine dönecek. En yakın zamanda biz de işimize dönmeyi umuyoruz. Çok teşekkür ediyorum senin için de. Ben teşekkür ederim. Değerli Gökhan dostum, hayırlı olsun olsun dilerim tüm ekibinizle. Ee, bir de keyifli ve başarılı üç günler e, bizim önünde. Kesinlikle bunu inanlıyorum. inanlıyorum. Zaten başladık beraber. O kadar fazla beraber yaptık. Ee, bu üç gün 
çok başarılı geçeceğiz. Çok çok teşekkürler. Uh, maybe just a very quick synergy, synergy of what we discussed. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> a very quick, uh, quick uh, synergy of what Gökhan said with us. Of course, he talked a little bit about the difficulties of staging the online event. Um, and uh, Gökhan mentioned that it is not easy to stage an online event, to go from, from offline, from live to online. And that, of course, everything, including this platform and the software and all the technical issues, have its uh, testing period. And that if we encounter any technical difficulties, his apologies up front now. Uh, but uh, they worked very hard to to offer a good platform and a good online event. And we all hope that this is going to going to take place smoothly. And Gökhan also mentioned that it's been a very tough year and that already in March when the pandemic started, uh, it was quite clear to him and his team that the event in December will not be. Okay, I'm terribly sorry. It seems that we have a little bit of technical problems. So we're just continuing right now. And uh, after Gökhan's welcome remarks, we will go on with our opening remarks. And one very dear friend of the uh, Uzakruta Travel Summit that we all know from the last years is our dear friend, Mr. Bülent Akarcalı. Mr. Bülent Akarcal is, is the former Minister of Tourism in Turkey, of the Republic of Turkey. He has followed the Turkish development of the Turkish tourism industry very closely for many, many years as a responsible minister. And then also as the uh, consultant to the industry, he has followed a lot of developments in Turkey and internationally. And I would like to ask our technical friends now to tell me whether we are ready to hear Mr. Bülent Akarcalı to welcome us to the Uzakrata Online Travel Summit. I'm just hearing now that Mr. Bülent is not ready yet. So we will now proceed to our next speaker. And this is going to be Mr. Rafat Ali from the company Skift. Skift is a very exciting uh, technological company in the travel industry, a travel tech pioneer. And I would last, like to ask Mr. Rafat Ali to uh, address us and to tell us uh, his thoughts on this very early morning. If I can see him now, I will greet him. And uh, please, uh, Rafat, the floor is yours. Good morning. Where, where, where are you? I think we do have a we do have a tone issue. Oh, Alex, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes I can. Good morning, Rafat. Where okay, are good you? morning. Yeah, it looks like I'm in a, in a strange uh, salon. That's because I'm in Meknes, Morocco. That's where I am. And um, I was uh, I'm originally obviously based in New York, but uh, I'm here for a uh, family visit. So that's where I am. It's about 6 a.m. in the morning here. So I'm excited to be part of this. Thank you for inviting me. It's very good very good to have you here with us, uh, Rafat. Um, you mentioned already two locations. You mentioned New York, you mentioned Mo Morocco. So it seems like you're traveling a great deal. How are you coping with this, with this situation of not being able to travel? Although I'm, Actually, I'm sure you do travel. <laughs> No, we're, we're not traveling. This is our first trip uh, since February. So um, this was my first flight that I took, my wife and I. And it was uh, definitely as scary as you would imagine it to be. Uh, this is our first international flight, first flight. And obviously the case, the case numbers are rising. So, um, you know, travel industry has a lot to do to inspire confidence in people. And I think we're still very, very early on it. I'm, I'm sure you guys are going to talk about it the next, uh, you know, few days as well. So um, I think I have about 15 minutes. Should I should I jump into my presentation? Just jump, just in. jump in. Okay. All right. Thank you again for inviting me. Thank you, Gokun and uh, his team who invited me. So um, uh, I am going to, over the next 15 minutes, talk about... Um, uh, a little bit about SCIFT, a little bit about what we see in the world of travel and how do we see the pandemic affecting the future of travel. For those of you who don't know what SCIFT is, we are uh, a business media company that covers the business of travel. We do news, research, conferences, um, uh, online events, et cetera, et cetera, everything else uh, covering the global industry. We've been doing this now for eight years. We've sort of quickly become the largest news source globally. And um, 
uh, and all, uh, the last 10 months obviously has been very, very hard for us as, as it has been for the travel industry, but our, um, our team of journalists and analysts have been speaking to, to all of you in the travel industry and trying to figure out what's happening obviously during the pandemic and what, um, what happens after. So my, my, my presentation will be about um, what we've learned or at least some points of what we learned from speaking to the CEOs and top executives of all the big um, travel players, whether in airlines or hospitality or online travel or startups, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I'm going to try and share my screen. I hope this works. Um, as I think we've already found out, uh, the virtual world is a, is a tiny bit, um, tiny bit tricky. And I think this should work. Can you guys see my presentation? I think so. Okay. All right. Um, let me make this full screen so that you all can see. Okay. So uh, travels, travels coming future. What we've learned from speaking to top executives across all these years. I just gave you a quick overview of what Skift is. Uh, eight years in, we've become the most influential media brand in the business of travel. Uh, it is how this, the the travel industry and the larger world understands what's happening in the sector. Uh, not going to go through all of this. This is the Skift universe. We do news, research, uh, we do forums. These are the conferences that we do. We bought two companies over the last two years, one focused on the, uh, the airline industry, one focused on the events industry itself. Then we do awards and we have a creative studio. We, ha we even have a foundation and all these things in the bottom you see are our newsletters. Um, so let's jump into it. Um, these are, I would say, seven lessons that we've learned and the top lesson that I think the travel industry, every travel executive that we've spoken to, uh, particularly this year, believes it's a two-year cycle, meaning the recovery is a two-year cycle from here. Nobody wants to consider anything longer. Um, everybody thinks that um, obviously 2020 is a lost year. 2021 will be a year where the vaccine will be propagated across the travel industry. Sorry, well, uh, across the world. And then 2022 is where we really see the recovery happen in the travel industry. We've posed them questions, what if that doesn't happen? What if it's 2023, 24, 25? What if the vaccine, even though the early results are good, may not be as, as good when it, when it, when it gets um, given to the larger world? What if a lot of people don't take the vaccine? What if all kinds of, so obviously there are a lot of what if, scenarios here, but the travel industry hasn't yet uh, planned for the what if 2023, what if 2024 scenario. Uh, a lot of them obviously have, have raised a lot of money, these large travel companies to basically go through 2020, 2021. But if, if the recovery doesn't happen by 2022, then the travel industry is, another, is, in, is, is in an even lot more trouble than it is um, today. So that's, I think, one of the biggest um, learnings that we're hearing from the travel industry. Um, one of the, the hopeful parts that I think that's going to come out of this pandemic is every rational leader in the travel industry get, gets that the travel industry grew too big too quickly, particularly over the last 10 years. Over tourism is a word that the travel industry has been using for the last few years. It's you may know this, that Skift actually coined that term back in 2016. And uh, from over tourism to now under tourism in all parts of the world, inclu including Turkey and other parts of the world as well. Um, travel industry um, CEOs that we've spoken to realized that it became too much. And with that happening as well as climate change, uh, there was already this resistance building against the travel industry, particularly around climate change. And this is a chance to reset. Obviously, the travel industry will be much smaller going from here, at least for the next few years. And um, and I think the travelers, by being trapped in their homes, realize that that the extractive effects of what happens with, with too much tourism on the planet um, is certainly negative. And uh, we feel that a more um, meaningful travel industry, potentially a more meaningful traveler, the traveler who maybe travels less number of times a year, 
but maybe travels when they do go to travel, travel a longer period. So I think that's one of the very interesting um, potential trends that we'll see going ahead as well. Um, this from an operational perspective is extremely exciting. What used to take uh, six months to build at large travel companies now is taking six weeks to build. What happens? So, for instance, MGM, which is a giant hotel hospitality player based out of Vegas, um, they build their contactless check in system in a month. This was uh, when obviously the pandemic hit, they reopened in July. So, over the, the May and June period, they were able to build a contactless check in system for this giant hotel company which if this was normal times, would have probably taken them years to build. They would have hired a consulting firm. They would have hired army of tech people. They would have come up with a plan, strategy, meetings, et cetera, et cetera. But because they were shut and they knew they had to build something quick because that otherwise when the business opens, if they haven't gotten their act together, uh, would be a huge part. So uh, that startup mentality of doing more with less is what a lot of travel companies, I'm sure each of you in your own, um, companies and industries are dealing with this, which is if you've laid off these many people, but if you need to build something quickly so that you can pivot from your existing business to something else, whether it's, for instance, physical events to online events, then you need to move quick and you need to do with smaller resources. So six months to six weeks, this is the mantra that all executives in the travel industry actually want to carry forward. This is what they want to continue, even if the pandemic um, passes away. So this is another, um, I think, positive potentially that has come out of it. Um, one of the other things, the contactless tech and tech in general, I think the hotel industry was, was, was much behind. And I think this pandemic sort of put it to the fore. Airline industry, which has um, obviously at the airports, kiosks and tech, et cetera, mobile boarding passes had had come over the last 10 years, but in the hotel industry that hadn't. Um, with contactless tech and, and not just front of the house, but also back of the house um, with obviously less staff that they can afford um, is definitely being adopted a lot faster. So, you know, you will hear the word, I'm sure you've, you're already tired of hearing the word contactless tech in your own worlds and there, there are 20 vendors that are now pitching you every day. Uh, about their new tech, but I feel like this is just the start of it. And I think the biggest innovations in contactless tech may not actually come from the tech players in the travel industry. They'll come in the larger world, particularly retail, where there's so much money if Amazon and others are putting billions of dollars into these types of technologies, they will then be adopted by the hotel industry as well. So Fascinating. I think this is one of the areas that Skift is um, very, very keen on watching over the next few years. Uh, this next thing, which uh, sort of a pet peeve of mine, if if you will, um, family travel as a sector has generally been ignored. Nobody really thinks family travel is sexy or or like, you know, it's not like millennials traveling or, or you know, the new whatever new um, demographic you want to say. One of the things I was very surprised by, we are... Um, journalists as well as research folks and I have interviewed executives in these times and I said, well, have you thought about um, families traveling during the pandemic and how their needs are different? I think I put this to the CEO of JetBlue. JetBlue is a, um, is a large airline in, in the US and, and, and um, uh, I think the president said, we, we haven't really thought of them as a separate then than our usual traveler, which I thought was, was very interesting because, um, you know, imagine a young family traveling in pandemic, you know, whether for leisure or for personal reasons or visiting family, whatever it is, having two young kids and the safety issues that comes with that, like running after the kids. Um, one of my um, personal examples that, is that I have a five, five and a half year old son and we've only booked a hotel once the first time we ever traveled with him and we realized we just need more space and the hotel industry hasn't figured out how to accommodate families while they're traveling so we've always used airbnb always since we've traveled since then uh, he's now almost six years old and so uh, i do think that it's unfortunate that the travel industry does not focus that much on 
family's needs. You sort of realize once you have a baby that the world, and this is particularly true in a country like U.S., um, is not uh, is not built to be family friendly. Whether it's restaurants, whether it's hotels, whether it's airports, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I, I still feel there's so much opportunity, particularly as people come out of the pandemic and leisure travel and local travel with families is the biggest savior of the travel industry. The travel industry needs to get, to get very serious about uh, how to address the issues that are unique to families. And there's not just a single type of family, obviously there are different types of families as well. Um, uh, let me, this is one of the most exciting trends I would say that we are really focused on, which is what's the collision of a world gone remote? What effect does that have on business travel? And how does it intersect with the future of work and future of living? And so um, there's still tons of activity left to come in this sector. Uh, if a, a good part of the world, potentially tech-friendly companies become virtual permanently, um, or at least a big part of their, their workforce becomes permanent, uh, what are the opportunities for the travel industry? Obviously, business travel becomes a, becomes smaller than it used to be. People are already saving billions of dollars, obviously, on business travel expenses. Two, obviously, the detriment of the travel industry. But what are the creative opportunities? I know many hotel companies have launched, hey, come and work from our hotel, take a break from being in lockdown in your house. And that's a very sort of, I would say, one-on-one, -on -one, very early uh, version of this. And uh, hopefully uh, we think there's tons of opportunities in the digital nomad world. Many countries uh, have launched digital nomad visas where you can come and stay in a country. For instance, I think Barbados has launched something, a nine month visa where um, you come as a tourist but can stay there for nine months and work from there as well. So a lot of things uh, interesting, these types of long-term visa uh, issues will, um, these long-term visa promotions will come as well. So we think it's an exciting opportunity and we're definitely covering it. And again, a silver lining hopefully of when the future of work meets the future of travel meets the future of living. So um, quickly on the tour operator sector, um, China sector has a lot of small businesses that are dependent on it. These are the group tours. These are uh, multi-day group tours and um, has probably been the worst hit sector out of all sectors of travel. And at least hotel industry has some revenues, airline industry has some revenues, uh, other parts of the industry has some revenues. Tour operators, the tours that cross different borders because the borders are pretty much closed. Nobody really wants group tours to happen. Um, is in a really bad shape. A lot of small businesses that are being shut in travel are in the, tra in the tour operator ecosystem. How do group tours get reinvented even when the vaccine comes? Because obviously it's going to take a while. And so we're really talking probably literally a three to four to five year recovery cycle for the tour operator sector. Do they finally come online? Because that's ease of booking that usually tours get sold through, used to get sold through the high street um, stores. That doesn't happen that much anymore, but it does get sold through travel agents as well, um, brochures, et cetera. Do they finally come online? I think that's one of the biggest uh, things that we're looking for. Um, the last one, uh, I just took my first flight uh, after the pandemic uh, with my wife. Um, there's research, in fact, the Southwest, which is a large airline in the US, the chief commercial officer spoke at, our con at one of our conferences last month, or this was actually two months ago. And he said that the intent to travel for people goes up from 50% to 80% after they've taken their first flight. So it's really, um, that's what their research shows. And so it's really about if the travel industry wants to recover, it really needs to, um, to do all the things to help people overcome the fear of their first time travel. And then once that happens, people get more confident from there. You're able to stay in a hotel. Like we, uh, my son and I stayed in a hotel in New York City just for, a staycation. This is in August. So that helped us overcome our fear of staying in hotels. We know what to do. We know how to check in and be more careful, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really about getting uh, people uh, back traveling the first time, even if it's a small travel locally, and then take the next step from there. So a lot of marketing for the travel industry has to go to get people to travel for the first time. 
well, first time in the pandemic after maybe a year of break. So that's really it. If you like our um, insights, uh, we do have a news subscription service. You go to skiff.com slash pro, and we in fact have a Cyber Monday discount going, and you'll be able to get unlimited access to our stories. Um, that's really it. I'm happy to hand it back um, to the team at Uza Quarta. Solution. Um, I can only imagine, you know, what work is behind all of that, as it is behind a lot of travel tech um, ventures and solutions. So my question would be, how how how do you see how do you see because you're in the industry, how do you see the next couple of years? What's the road ahead? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, it's going to be tough. A number that that that we we we say is that if the travel, if the companies can survive between uh, forty to sixty, and I um, and forty to, forty to sixty percent of their revenues, which means um, if hotels can survive at forty percent to sixty percent occupancy for the next two years, laying off staff, cutting the cost, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they'll be fine after that. So I think this is what we're seeing. You are seeing hotels in many parts of the world. China is, is an example. US is an example. They're sort of now in the 40% occupancy range. And uh, it's an interesting number. Uh, uh, and if companies uh, can figure out how to um, survive with about 40% of demand for the next two years, that's where potentially then on the other side, they're able to come out smaller, mm -hmm. but at least they'll be there. Like forget about you know 100%. Let's at least get to the other side before we can survive from there. So that's kind of what we said. Uh, did you have a con one year before or two years ago? Were you ever thinking of this? Do you have a contingency plan? Was this ever <laughs> on your agenda? I mean, you ever wake up and say, "Oh my God, what am I going to do if we stop traveling all around yeah. the world?" Did no, but no. So here's what we were planning for: a recession. We knew 10-year bull run for the whole economy. The, the thing about recession is it's not like travel goes to zero. Recession, travel, demand declines. Yeah. But it's not zero. So, no, nobody was. I mean, you know, anybody who can say that they were prepared for this is lying, obviously. But, no. Um, but I'm very hopeful on 2021. I mean, the news on vaccine, I'm sure you're all obviously hearing all the news that, that we are hearing as well, is really good. I also um, think that um, particularly in US with the new administration coming in, there's a lot of optimism. I think that optimism is not just going to be helpful in the US, but obviously US has a large influence around the world. So I think this optimism will come into the industry as well, uh, both in terms of business, economy, uh, people having less chaos in their lives. Less chaos in our lives. Yeah. <laughs> That is that is a good that is a good slow, slogan. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Rafat. Uh, you'll stay with us. We'll see you again. I think during the three days. So thank you very much, Mr. Rafat Ali from Skift, um, sharing this morning thoughts with you from Marrakesh, from from from Morocco. I think in Morocco. Morocco. Yes, Meknes. Yes, thank you again. Yes. Excellent. Thank, thank you. And now from Morocco, we move to the other side of the world. We move to Malaysia. Now, obviously, Malaysia is a great travel destinations all year around and whoever has been to Malaysia remembers incredible hospitality, incredible service, level of service, facilities, excellent weather, everything, everything that needs to need, needs to go together. And while we're waiting for for our guests to come to come online, um, let me also I'm sorry, I the technical problems have have been so um, taking us in the first minutes of the uh, of the uh, opening. I didn't introduce myself. I was told. So I will do that. My name is Alex Abi. So it's very, you know, it's very simple. You know me from last year. I've been with this event for the last few years. My name is Alexander, Alexander Majedovic. And um, the, the, the best title I can give myself among any work title or anything is to be um, a very close friend of Gökhan. And uh, I help him with the conference, uh, getting the audience through the conference during the day, making sure everybody is in place and time. And it is a great pleasure to be with you. I'm joining you from Germany, from the north of Germany. It is freezing cold here. We have below zero this morning, and um, it's even greater than to be to be here in the audience and to, to share the worldwide uh, weather with you, and not only my weather here in northern Germany. 
So uh, I just hear that we have a little delay from from Malaysia. We will uh, join our guests from Malaysia in a very short moment. And now we are shifting a little bit back from Malaysia. Halfway between Malaysia and Europe, we have Turkey and Istanbul, where all our team is located. And I want to thank our technical team, first of all, in the morning. It's a very difficult job that doing staging an online event. We all know that. And uh, we, we, do, we do appreciate all the, all the effort on the online event that the technical team around Gökhan is doing. So thank you very much. Uh, arkadaşlar, çok teşekkür ederim. Uh, teknik desteğiniz için tüm ekibinin başarılı diliyorum ve uh, tekrar çok çok sağ olun. And now I'm trying to see who our next um, guest is. Uh, and I think we're waiting for Mr. Mete Vardar from Jolly Tours. Um, in uh, in a few moments, he will be he will be with us. Um, it's actually when, when when we think about what has changed in 2020, it, as as Rafat said, everything has changed. I, I'm I'm going to ask the question again: um, if anybody of us thought one year ago that world travel will stop, not decrease. Not, not, not uh, as as Rafat said, a recession, but that it completely stops. I think nobody of us ever, ever thought of this, and and this maybe you know should give us a sign, always to have a contingency plan, always to think of the unthinkable, and for the travel industry, obviously it's unthinkable that travel stops, that planes don't take off anymore. If any of you has been to airports recently, have taken a flight, you could see all the planes parked you know for for the big airlines this is a disaster situation i have traveled through istanbul recently and seeing all the turkish airlines planes which is the the fastest growing airline in the world and um, flies to the most number of international destinations among any other airline and seeing them parked there and air traffic reduced is really really very painful so um you know i think Apart from all the optimism that we have, also we should have a compassion for all the employees, for all the people that are working in the travel industry. It's really a tough, tough time, and uh, we all hope, you know, that we will get that we will get uh, out of it. And all of that, of course, is linked to the many, many service businesses around. Um, I have traveled this summer. I've been um, to France. I've been uh, to Turkey. I've been to some other parts of Europe. Um, of course, it is also. There is another side. There is there is less people on the road. There is less people in general traveling, and that gives another pleasure. I went to Venice, and Venice, um, as has anybody been to Venice, you you know it is overcrowded. It's over overcrowded at all times. Maybe not in a deep winter, but completely overcrowded. And Venice was empty. I was there. I was there without any other guests. Um, I was alone on uh, Saint Mark's Square, which was a great experience. And that we are actually now traveling to Malaysia. So, just as I said before, Malaysia is a great tourism destination. Um, fantastically high level of tourism and service. And whoever has ever been to Malaysia uh, can probably confirm that. Great people, great hospitality, high friendliness on all level and uh, very, very good hotel and tourism facilities. And uh, it seems now that we have, uh, that we have with us Mr. Zulkifly Said. I wonder if Mr. Said can hear us. Mr. Said, can you hear us? Yes. Selamat, selamat pagi. Atau mungkin selamat petang untuk anda. Apa kabar? Uh, selamat petang lah. You can see it's uh, almost 2 p.m. here. Yes, indeed. And we're in the middle of the night still in Germany, and uh, Istanbul is slowly waking up. So, uh, so sir, you are you are now in the best shape of all of us. So, without <laughs> further ado, I would like to to hand over to Mr. Zulkifly uh, Said, uh, Director at Tourism Malaysia, who's, who has been supporting the Uzakrota Travel Summit for many years, and again this year. Uh, sir, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, for giving us this opportunity to Tourism Malaysia to be a part of this uh, Uzak Krota uh, online tourism uh, promotion 
event organized uh, in Istanbul, Turkey. And uh, I would like to wish uh, all listeners uh, taking part in this uh, Uzakrota event, either in Istanbul or in other parts of the world. All the best to everyone and uh, hope everyone is in the best condition and to continue staying safe uh, and to also wish uh, everyone if I'm still early perhaps a uh, good year ahead 2021 um, as everyone know tourism is of course the economic contributor in terms of foreign exchange to a lot of countries around the world and established countries where tourism is the main, among the main contributor in terms of economic contribution and also countries that is just beginning to be involved in the promotion and also identifying tourism as an important economic contributor beginning the second quarter of this year was badly affected by this COVID-19 pandemic and Malaysia is no exception and just to share a little bit uh, of uh, historical background here, what happened during the first quarter of this year, when the COVID-19 uh, started hitting us here in Southeast Asia, Malaysia on the 18th of March in 2020, the government of Malaysia declared a movement control order, or you could say a lockdown to restrict the movement of uh, its citizens uh, and also restrict the entrance of foreign tourists. And as a result of this uh, spread of COVID-19, uh, our Visit Malaysia Year 2020 campaign fell victim and the government decided to cancel this uh, Visit Malaysia 2020 campaign. And a couple of months later, the movement control order was extended and later changed to the conditional movement control order. This is to help support several key economic sectors in the country. Uh, and subsequently, this control movement uh, conditional movement control order was changed to recovery movement control order on the 10th of June uh, 2020. And this allowed people from one state to cross to another state. So those that have been uh, restricted to one particular area since March, from the 10th of June, they were allowed to travel across state. So people in the south can travel up north, then people in the central region can travel down south, going to up north and so forth. And in a way, how to contribute to domestic tourism. So today I'm going to share to you, share with you several information uh, on three areas here, which is the tourism performance some issues and challenges and uh, way forward uh, what the government of Malaysia and Tourism Malaysia has uh, gone through. Next slide. So, just to share with you, uh, for the benefit of uh, those listening, uh, tourism is among the top three in terms of foreign exchange uh, contribution to the country. Uh, go back to the, to the slide. And over the years, 
for the past i would say more than 30 30 years or 30 years or when we had our first visit malaysia year in 1990 uh, we have achieved several international recognition and accolades just to share here such as the uh, tourism board voted by the judging board at the 2020 asia destination film awards friendlier cities in the top 50 by big seven travel channel best healthcare in the world 2019 malaysia is among six countries with the best healthcare in the world 2019 by international living.com Malaysia ranked seven world's 10 best places to retire in 2020 by internationalliving.com. And in the Muslim friendly category by Mastercard and Crescent Rating, Malaysia continue for the past 10 years to be number one in the top 10 halal friendly holiday destination. Okay, we move on. And this is uh, showing here the tourism industry contributed almost 16% of the country's GDP, estimated a USD 57.19 billion contribution to the country with a steady increase in the last five years. The same trend also goes to the employment in the tourism industry where a total of 3.6 million people out of 32.7 million Malaysia population engaged in the industry. Next. This slide share, uh, shows you the region uh, overall tourist arrival to Malaysia, showing a significant decrease uh, even for its neighboring countries arrival for the first half of this year due to the pandemic so you can see a lot of uh, red arrow pointing downwards there almost all if not all region recorded negative growth and next so we go back to the slide okay. so you can see ASEAN our biggest contributor throughout the years around almost 70 percent uh, experience almost 100% uh, negative growth, 99.7% here, and only 5,895 uh, arrivals only for the first half of this year. Uh, those are also those are only mostly <coughs> essential travelers. <coughs> Next. And as you can see from the uh, Slide here, tourists from uh, Turkey recorded arrivals of uh, 3,068, a decrease of minus 59.3% compared to the same period in 2019 for the first half of this year. And you can see in the tourism forecast chart here also, the series of global economic events of this pandemic since 1998 financial crisis is the most difficult situation that our industry here and I think most countries around the world has experienced. So you can see the growth from, two, from 1988 there in terms of uh, uh, arrival and all the way to 2020 going through the financial crisis in 97, 98, the SARS, the H1N1 uh, uh, pandemic or sickness, not pandemic, and then the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines MH370 and also the MH17 casualty. The numbers were still good at that time, 27 million, 26 million arrivals last year, 26.1 million arrival. And this year, due to the pandemic, we forecast, we forecast within the region of only 4.4 million uh, coming to Malaysia. 
Okay, next. Some issues and challenges that we want to share with you. The government has come up with many support to the people and the tourism industry. Among them is the six months uh, moratorium over the loan payment and with the recent budget announcement in uh, the month of November this, uh, this year, uh, the banks has decided to extend this moratorium period up to the first half of uh, next year. And uh, in terms of tax relief for tourism industry, RM1 billion in approximately USD 200 plus million in financing is uh, churned out by the government to the tourism industry and several other segments as well. And uh, hold on. And of course, some of the pertinent issue here is there is no indicative date in terms of opening up of international border, which is very crucial. I think for most countries in the world, not just Malaysia, where we hope to perhaps begin uh, quickly as possible so we can see some life perhaps in terms of international tourist arrival for Malaysia and also to other countries around the world that depend on international tourist arrival and uh, income generated from international tourist arrival. And at the same time, the government is also deliberating on coming up with travel bubbles either with green zone countries or specific region or city or area in that country with specific city or island or area here in Malaysia which is deemed as a green zone area. So next. Way forward, still the survival of uh, tourism in the area of arts and culture after the post-movement control order is not very good and more incentives is needed for the people in the arts and culture community to maintain their business and equip them with knowledge to prepare them for new normal type of business dealings. On ongoing uh, initiatives here, the consistent engagement is made uh, by the Tourism Recovery Action Council which comprise of uh, several ministries and agencies and also domestic roadshow program nationwide uh, focusing on domestic travel which I think many countries around the world now is focusing on. The government also has approved a one-off assistance for tourist guide with uh, RM600 or USD approximately uh, 150 US dollar incentive per tourist guide to help ease the burden of some of these tourist guide that has not been getting any kind of assignment due to the lack of uh, international tourists coming into Malaysia. Tourism Malaysia in its uh, Malaysia.travel website also has produced a landing page called deals and packages or promotion and packages giving a platform, online platform to enable tourism industry players to upload and share their various tourism uh, packages uh, for the general public uh, and to take advantage of the large number of the size of the civil service in the country uh, approximately 1.7 million and those in the unionized uh, civil servant organization at 1.2 million 
Tourism Malaysia and the Union of uh, Civil Service Employees has come up with special domestic holiday packages for civil servants to go traveling around the country in conjunction with our domestic tourism campaign which we call here locally Cuti Cuti Malaysia or literally translated as uh, holiday in Malaysia to help the arts and craft community craft on the go uh, by the Malaysia Handicraft uh, Agency providing digital service services in the form of mobile apps to increase accessibility of information about craft entrepreneurs throughout Malaysia. As of 31st August uh, this year, close to 1,000 or 946 craft uh, entrepreneurs have registered under this app and the uh, number is uh, growing. For the meetings, incentive convention and uh, exhibition or MySet segment, the Meet in Malaysia campaign uh, was uh, launched by the Malaysia Convention Bureau, a form of incentive to assist and support MICE industry players in organizing business events in Malaysia in a hybrid manner, such as what we are doing today, both uh, uh, mostly online and physically to a certain extent, adhering to the standard operating procedure by the National Security Council and the Ministry of Health, uh, Malaysia. Under the uh, Penjana Tourism Financing, uh, the government provides this facility to support small, medium enterprise in the tourism sector by pres preserving their capacity and assisting them to adjust and remain viable post the movement control order period. Government also organizes uh, through the various agencies, the Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture included, online courses in collaboration with the Malaysia Tourist Guide Council, the Association of Tour and Travel Agencies for licensed tour guides. Uh, as of 31st August 2020, a total of 5,053 tour guides nationwide have attended this course. Again, for the Crafts Entrepreneur and E-Craft Bazaar, an online platform was created to help the craft entrepreneurs to promote and sell their products. As of 31st August 2020, 1,198 entrepreneurs have registered with this online platform with a total sales value of Ringgit Malaysia 5.8 million or approximately US dollar, 1.5 million US dollar. Next. So, some recommendations and decision here uh, is sought and also has already been implemented uh, for domestic travel bubble states. The various states in Malaysia which are identified as green zone is allowed people staying in the green zone states to travel to other green, green zone states. This to help further reviving the business economic sector of the domestic tourism here in Malaysia. And, uh, okay, hold on. So for back, back to the slide 17, uh, before this, okay, some of the uh, SOP uh, put in place is 
people are still required to wear masks. Uh, hand sanitizer facilities is uh, a compulsory at most of all, almost at all uh, places where public is to visit and social distancing of at least one meter is uh, compulsory. For the uh, recommendations for international tourism, some of the recommendation is COVID-19 test is required prior to travel and upon arrival. And cost related to this is to be borne by the visitors. And they need to also produce a certificate to declare them COVID free as well as having health travel insurance. Sir, and we would need to come we would need to come slowly to an end, just just alerting you. But then uh, we would need to come slowly to an end, uh, otherwise we will be running okay. late. Okay, all right. So uh, I think that's all I have for the moment, just to share some list of our participants from Malaysia that is taking part in this Uzak Prota uh, online uh, event. Here is the list here you can see. We have combination of uh, government agency from Sabah here in Borneo, Langkawi Island, uh, Penang, and several uh, hotels as well as uh, tour operator. So please, uh, I invite all visitors to get in touch with these uh, partners here that are also participating and also our office in Istanbul, Ms. Pujang, who is the deputy director, and Mr. Chara, the marketing manager of our office here. Our office in, uh, in Istanbul will be more than happy to have uh, those in Istanbul for their information and plans about traveling to Malaysia once the international border is open between Malaysia and uh, Istanbul. And we hope that that's going to be very, very soon. Uh, uh, and and I think we're all all quite hopeful on on, yes, on it. Yes, yes. Thank Everyone you. is hoping. hoping thank you, thank very, you very much for listening. Thank you, uh, Terry Makasi. Thank you very much, sir, uh, Mr. Zulkifly Said, uh, Director of uh, Tourism Malaysia. You will be with us. Uh, you will be available for networking and for uh, for giving further information. For now, thank you very much, and all the best wishes to Kuala Lumpur. And without further ado, from Kuala Lumpur back to Istanbul, and um, we meet in the middle, as I already said. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a bit of halfway, maybe not exactly halfway, but uh, almost uh, at the gateway of Europe. And there we have Mr. Mete Vardar. Mete Vardar is the uh, head of uh, Jolly Tours, a very well-established agency, uh, travel agency, incoming and outgoing agency in Turkey. One of the biggest ones. You see the buses everywhere. You see their advertising everywhere. And uh, I've been knowing Mete for the last 20 years. And all I can say, it's a pleasure to see you. Good night, Mete Bey. How are you? Good night, Alex. How are you? How are you? Çok çok iyiyim, teşekkürler. Ee, buyurunuz, e, sizin sözü, sözünüz e, sizi bırakıyorum. E, Valla şöyle, e, tabii son iki senedir seninle beraber e, yan yana program yaptık. Bu sene böyle, böyle kısmet oldu. E, umut ediyorum ki en yakın zamanda tekrar bir araya geliriz. Keyifli sohbetlerimize devam ederiz. İnşallah. E, e, i̇lk başta kutluyorum e, tüm Uzak Rota ekibini. Başta Gökhan Bey olmak üzere tüm ekibi kutluyorum. Ee, yine çok başarılı bir organizasyona adım atıyorsunuz. Ee, bugünlerde bu şekilde uzaktan da olsa birbirimize katkı sağlamaya çalışıyoruz. Buradaki tüm dostlarımıza e, ilk başta e, sağlıklı günler diliyorum. Umut ediyorum ki e, 2020'nin artık bugün itibariyle son ayına girdik. 1 Aralık itibariyle. E, 2020 bitiyor. Ee, i̇nşallah 2021'de e, daha güzel şeyleri konuştuğumuz, e, güzellikleri konuştuğumuz bir sene olur. E, ben 8-9 aydır e, açıkçası e, devamlı konuşuyorum. Özellikle turizmle ilgili tabii ki. Uzmanlık tarafımızı e, öyle görürsek e, teveccüh ediyor insanlar. Bu anlamda da e, şimdi turizm elçisi gibi açıkçası 1 Nisan'dan bugüne kadar 
e, bir şeyleri ifade etmeye çalışıyoruz. Bir şeyleri söylemeye çalışıyoruz. Tabii ki çok önemli. Sadece e, çünkü ülkemizde yaşanan bir e, sıkıntıyla karşı karşıya değiliz. Bütün dünya turizmi, biraz hizmet sektörünün, tüm sektörlerin etkilendiği ama biraz hizmet sektörünün dediğimiz işte seyahat ajantaları, otelleri, hava yollarının etkilendiği e, bir dönem. E, hakikaten çok zor bir dönem. E, bu dönem hep ben, hep söylüyorum ben e, tek başımıza bir şirket olarak e, bu krizden çıkma şansımız yok. Bütün bileşenlerin hep beraber hareket edip e, ortak noktada e, buluşup e, bu önemli süreci, bu sıkıntılı süreci hep beraber aşacağız diye düşünüyorum. Bununla ilgili tabii ki en önemli şey bizler ne yaparsak yapalım. Sağlık önlemleri yani aşının, e, ilacın e, bulunmasından sonra ben e, eski normalleşmeye çok hızlı bir şekilde bilhassa sek- seyahat sektörünün e, geçebileceğini düşünüyorum. E, çünkü insanlar hakikaten sıkıldı. Seyahat ezgürlüğü kısıtlandı. Seyahat çünkü bir lüks değil, seyahat bir ihtiyaç. Bunu çok net bir şekilde bu sene çok daha fazla anladık. E, umut ediyorum ki şu anda e, iyi haberler geliyor. Özellikle dünyada aşı ile ilgili e, 2021'in ilk çeyreğinde aşılanmanın başlanacağı ile ilgili bir takım şeyler ifade ediyor. İnşallah en sağlıklı ortamda e, bunun karşılığını görürüz ve Nisan ayı itibariyle e, daha sağlıklı bir şekilde e, seyahat severler tatillerini gerçekleştirebilir. E, bir sorunuz varsa bunu cevaplamak isterim. Çok teşekkürler Mete Bey. Ee, yani en önemli tabii ki en önemli siz dediğiniz gibi sağlık. Ee, bu dolayısıyla e, aşı haberler geldi. Yani çok fazla haberler her gün ha- farklı haberler geliyor. Peki ben öbür arkadaşımıza soru söyledim. Size aynı soru söylemek istedim. Bir sene önce böyle bir şey düşündünüz mü? Yani herhangi bir planlama kafada bir planlama kaldı mı? Yaptınız mı? Böyle bir durum. Yani e, turizm ve seyahat duruyor gibi bir durum. E, düşündünüz öyle bir şey? Ya şimdi şöyle söyleyeyim. E, bizim biliyorsunuz şirketimiz hem aile şirketi hem aynı zamanda kurumsallık adına bir 4 sene evvel dünyanın en büyük fonuyla Goldman Sachs'la bir ortaklık yapısına gittik. E, şimdi ortaklarımız da e, açıkçası 3 senedir her 3 ayda bir daha sonra ayda bir olmak üzere şimdi nakit akışı tablosu. İşte iyi kötü daha iyi senaryolar üzerine bir takım çalışmalar filan Mart ayına kadar hep böyle geldik biz. Ama şu anda yaşadığımız bu senaryoların tamamen dışında. İşte ben iki tane çok büyük özellikle hizmet sektörü, seyahat sektörünün etkilendiği iki tane büyük kriz. Bir tanesinde daha ufak yaşlardaydım. Yani 15'li yaşlardaydım. E, Körfez savaşı oldu biliyorsunuz. O zamanlar e, çok büyük bir e, grup Öger Tur'la e, ortaklığımız vardı. 2 e, milyon Alman turist getiriyordu t- t- Türkiye'ye. Çok büyük bir kriz yaşandı. O dönemler babamların yaşadıklarını az çok hatırlıyorum. İşte 2015'te biliyorsunuz uçak krizi oldu. 2016'ya yansımaları çok fazla oldu. Bunda da çok ciddi bir takım sıkıntılar oluştu filan ama bugün hakikaten anlatılabilecek bir durum değil. Yani bundan önceki krizlerin dört kat büyüklüğünde hizmet sektörünün yara aldığı bir durumla karşı karşıyayız. Bununla ilgili karamsarla kapılmamak lazım. Tabii ki çok büyük bir erozyon var, çok büyük sıkıntılar var filan ama e, bu dönemde e, bir takım şeyleri, bir takım böyle, böyle krizli dönemlerde neler yapılması gerektiğini artı biz orta vadeli ve uzun vadeli planlarımızda biraz öne çekmiş olduk. Yani orta vadede ulaşmak istediğimiz planlara o 6 ay 7 ay içerisinde özellikle teknoloji altyapımızda yaptığımız yeni, yeni, yeniliklerle beraber üretmeye devam ettik ve biz 1 Nisan itibariyle ne bir çalışma arkadaşımızdan ayrıldık, ne bir e, öngördüğümüz, e, ulaşmak istediğimiz durumdan geri adım attık. Aynı planlamalarımız devam ettik. Evet para kaybettik e, ama güven kazandık. E, şirketimizin markasına e, katkı sağlayacak çok ciddi çalışmalar yaptık. Bununla ilgili umut ediyorum ki şöyle söyleyeyim ben size. Aşı bulunu ve normalleşirse biz eski günlerimizi aratmayacağız. Hatta çok daha hızlı. Çok daha cesaretli, çok daha doğru bir şekilde çalışma hızımıza devam edeceğiz. Bununla ilgili tüm önlemlerimizi aldık. Ee, heyecanımızı tekrar yakaladık, öyle söyleyeyim. Yani ben mesela 47 yaşındayım. Ee, 
böyle bir hani insanlarda bir yorgunluk olur ya belirli bir dönem e, hep böyle rutin çalışmalardan dolayı inanın 20 yaşına geri döndü kardeşim Mert e, bu dönem hakikaten inanılmaz e, çalışmalar yaptı ve şirkette mesela şunu anladık biz e, özellikle Mert'in yaptığı başarılardan sonra e, çalışma azminden ve şirkete katkılarından sonra geçen hafta itibariyle yönetim kurulunda karar aldı ve Mert vardır şirketin CEO'su olarak tepe yönetici olarak göreve getirdik. Mesela bunları belki gözlemleyemeyebilirdik ama böyle bir dönemde çok özel, çok önemli kararlar almamız için de e, biz daha fazla cesaretli noktaya geldik. Özellikle misafir noktasında biz mesela e, işte 17 Mart'ta biliyorsunuz virüs e, ülkemize geldi ve e, satışımız sıfır oldu ve ilk 20 günde yani 20 Nisan'a kadar o güne kadar yapılan satışların %93'ünü misafirden iade talebi geldi. Ama misafirimize doğru anlattık. Bu süreci e, hakikaten doğru bir şekilde anlattık. Çünkü biliyorsunuz biz aracı kurumu seyahat acıkladık. Misafirlerden ödeme alıyoruz. Ödemelerimizi hava yollarına, karayollarına ve otellere yapıyoruz. E, o dönem e, öyle bir şey yaşandı ki kriz sadece bizde olsa bir şekilde çözebiliriz ama Oteller de aynı sıkıntı yaşıyor. Hava yolları yani top yakın aynı sıkıntı. Dünya çapında böyle bir şey oldu. Dünya yaşıyor. Bizim işte yurt dışında işte Roma'daki otel grubuyla aynı şeyi yaşıyoruz. Barcelona'da aynı şeyi yapışıyoruz derken e, çok önemli birliktelik oldu. Ve bu dönemin %53 misafirimizi tekrar tatile ikna ettik. Yani misafirimiz dedi ki ödememiz sizde kalsın. Ben ilk tatilimde e, bunu e, gerçekleştiririm dedim. Bu çok önemliydi bizim için. Biz şunu anladık, 34 senedir Joli markası çok önemli ama içinde öyle bir doldurmuşuz ki bu markayı. Yani müthiş bir mutluluk var, sevinç var, birliktelik var. İşte otelci dostlarımızla, hava yollarıyla, yurt dışı partnerlerimizle en önemlisi misafirlerimizle hakikaten önemli bir duygu bütünlüğü oluşturmuşuz. Bu bizi cesaretlendi. Şimdi geçen hafta itibariyle erken rezervasyon kampanyası başladı. E, yurt içi turlarda. Dün itibariyle yurt dışı turları başladık. Yurt dışı turlarda hiç ödeme almıyoruz misafirimizden. Diyoruz ki rezervasyonunu yap. Ne zaman istiyorsan tatile gitmeden önce rezervasyonunu kapatabilirsin. Yurt içi turlarda diyoruz ki dörtte birini öde rezervasyonunun ki 18 taksitle ödeyebiliyor misafirimiz. Üç gün öncesine kadar iptal edebilirsin veya rezervasyonu tekrar gerçeğe çevirebilirsin diyor. Biz bununla ilgili çok ciddi kampanyaların karşılığında da Geçen seneki günlük satışları yakalamaya başladık. Yani insanlar, misafirlerimiz şunu gördü. Ee, biz de şunu anladık. Aşının bulunmasıyla beraber tatil alışkanlığının tekrar geriye döneceğini düşünüyoruz. Ve zaten hep bir sloganımız var. Bizim hep bunu ifade ederiz. Ee, en iyi ilaç tatildir diye söylüyoruz. Çünkü tatil insanların sosyal hayatında, iş hayatında, aile hayatında güzel bir tatil hakikaten çok önemli. O yüzden ben şöyle söylüyorum, tüm sektörler etkilendi. Ama inşallah umut ediyorum ki aşının bulunmasıyla beraber ilk canlanacak sektörü seyahat sektörü olmuş. Çok iyi. Ee, Mete Bey, e, paylaştığınız optimizm için çok teşekkür ediyorum. Hayırlısı uğurlu. Teşekkür uğurlu. ederim. Benim, ellerine sağlık. Yani tüm başarılılar dilerim. And, uh, maybe... Sizi unutuyorum. <gülüyor> Maybe just... Mal- Malezyalı dostumuzdan sonra bize çok fazla söz hakkı kalmadı ama neyse artık bir dahaki seneyi bekleyeceğiz. En doğru şeyleri söylediniz. You just yeah. said the very right things and I, once, one I would like to share with our audience uh, just to give a synergy but there is not really a big synergy necessary. Uh, I'd like to just say, uh, repeat one thing that uh, our friend Mete Vardar said from Jolly Tours and that is the optimism that he has projected and that once Everything is over, you know, once we are, there is the light, we reach the light at the end of the tunnel, the sector will come out even more stronger. And this is what Meta said, and I highly appreciate this. And by the way, I've been in Turkey for the last 22 years, and this is the uh, the high level of optimism among businessmen and businesswomen in Turkey that I have appreciated during all that time, is to look forward, look ahead, stay optimistic, and make the best out of the situation that we have. Thank you very much. Meta Vardar. From Jolly Tourist. Çok teşekkür ederim. Hayırlısı, uğurlusu olsun dilerim.